And welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. I'm your host, Mikey. Today we're going to learn how to do this. This is the Be True uh, Knit Cowl. And I am a beginner knitter, as most of you know, so I'm going to be teaching uh, this in two ways here online. The first way that I'm going to do it, I'm going to do rows number one through six slowly. I will probably mansplain, so if you want to leave a nasty comment about that, uh, that I'm being over talkative, then that's okay too, because I am so new that I've learned steps along the way that I think may help you. And then I'm going to continue to film rows number one through six again without the mansplaining, so that if you want to replay the video over and over without the long explanations of what I'm doing and what tips that I have, then you can do that. So that's what we're going to be doing today this is the first time i've ever doing anything like this and i was so proud of myself uh, for doing this and today we're going to get ourselves started so you'll need according to this a five and a half millimeter mm -hmm, uh, or us nine knitting needles do that you can do circular if you wish as well and then it's recommending red heart with love metallic yarn which i think is discontinued so just like a red heart super saver kind of level this is um here was uh red heart with love so this color, so this is just fair yarn that I had to play with. And I'm gonna be using a thicker yarn today and a thicker needles, but I don't know how much yarn you will need for that. So I'm gonna do that so it's easier for you to see where I'm sticking my stitches. So let's begin right now. <laughs> so here's what we're going to be doing. This is an easy level. So this is a step up of beginners. So I'm going to assume that you know how to cast on. So I'm going to cast on and you can use the straight knitting needles if you want to, or you can use circulars. And we're going to begin by casting on 48 stitches. And then I'm going to go through one through uh, six here. And I'm going to mansplain my way through it. Then I'm going to film again. And I'm going to do one through six without the mansplaining, hopefully. And we're, that's kind of my goal. One thing that you do need, it says to use stitch markers. You absolutely need stitch markers for this if you're new like I am. Um, it was really quite helpful for me to have those. So you just need three of those. And I also uh, have a little cheat sheet that I make for myself so that it will give me a memory hook. And so I might as well just check off this last one. So in row number one, there's a decrease. In row number two, there's a pearl. In row number three, there's a decrease. In number four, there's a pearl. In number five, there's an increase. And then number six is just a knit. So I'll explain that. And what I like to do is just check it off on my list. My mother used to do this kind of stuff with these check sheets. And I'm like, are you crazy? And here I am almost 50 years old having my little checklist. So maybe she was right. <laughs> Don't tell her though. So what I'm going to do is get yourself started today. And we're going to begin to do this process. So choose a cast on that you prefer. I'm going to do a long tail cast on. So I have a really long tail that I'm using. And people ask me, well, what is the dimension that you should do for that? I really don't know, but I have a friend that uh, tells me that the distance of one stitch equals three revolutions around the knitting needle. And that is probably true. So if you just uh, do that, so for example, we wrap it around three times, okay? And then you just kind of pinch and pull off. The distance here is the equivalent of one stitch so if you have to do 48 stitches it's approximately 48 of these but you have to determine that for yourself so i'm going to start by casting on a total of 48 i am using a long tail cast on and i taught this cast on the other day um, on youtube on how to do it with two knitting needles and that is going to be my process that i'm going to do with this here as well so cast on your 48 and then meet you back here in just a moment and this here is a long tail cast on with two knitting needles just in case you want a tutorial for that it's already filmed and on youtube i'll be back when 48 are done so i now have my 48 on here and now i have three stitch markers it's not laziness for me to not pick the same colors i want intentionally two different colors going on so what i'm going to do is that when we go to look at this project we're going to notice is that the edging here is always the same. So I want you to look at it from this perspective. So we're going to knit, 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 knit. And then in the middle, it changes. And then we're going to knit. So it's 10 stitches of knit, 10 stitches of knit, and everything else in between is this fancy stitch work. So what I want to do for this is that on my sheet of paper says green is on the right. So when I put in my first stitch marker, I want it to be green. Then when I do the middle one that I felt I needed after I really got started on this, we're gonna do green and then purple will be on the outside of it. So when I go to look at this project until I understand what is uh, front and what is back, um, this helps me to keep that in motion. So what I'm going to do is that we're going to now start knitting and we're going to do the knit stitch for this thing. 
So in, in row number one. So row number one, the first time that we go to do this, we're going to be establishing the stitch markers in place. And it does say to do that on the pattern as well. So let me just get my knitting in my hands. So we're going to knit the first 10 and I'm going to keep the video going and I'm just going to do the first 10 as a knit stitch. So I'll count with you. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So this is going to be the edging of the, what it appears is called as the garter stitch. So take that off. Grab whatever color that you decide is going to be on the right side when you're looking at it. So on the right hand of the project and right side facing up, place on the needle. This does not ever get um, knitted into the project. This is just a holder on the needle so that you can see the difference of the stitches. So let's move along in row number one to the middle section before you have to do the final 10 stitches, just like what you just saw. The stitch directly after the stitch marker uh, here is always going to be the same stitch that you'll notice in the future. And also the stitch, the 11th one before you get to here is always going to be the same stitch. So it's almost like a bowling alley. It's the gutter stitch. That's the way I kind of just call it myself. So the first one is going to be a knit stitch. So let's knit that. And then we're going to get into the repeating of the pattern. It says to skip the stitch. And it's not just skipping a stitch, it's actually a process to skip a stitch. And how we go to do that is that we are going to pick this one up here and transfer it immediately over. So you're going to transfer this one. This is called knit wise. So you just transfer, pick it up and put it over onto this needle. So you have not knitted at all. You're then going to knit this stitch. and there's still a little bit more to it. So we knit and we pull off. We're gonna take the original one that we just slid over and we're gonna pick it up over top of this one and right off the needle. Okay. And what this is doing is it's making two stitches into one. The next nine are going to be a knit stitch. So we're gonna count those out together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, I'll hold there for a second, get your nine done. The next two are going to be used as a knit two together. So what you have to do is stick this, instead of just going under the one, you're gonna go under both and capture it into both and make this two stitches just into one stitch when we go to complete this. So wrap around the back needle and knit. And two stitches just became one. You're technically now in the middle of your row. I want you to grab the next one, make it the same color as the first one, and put it on. This is the very center. I found this is very, very helpful. Um, I didn't start doing this until I was halfway through my sample and I realized that it's really helpful for me because what is existing between these two is a repeat pattern and it's repeated one more time. After you're ready, we're now going to start another repeat on what we just did. So we're going to immediately start and we're going to skip a stitch. So remember, it's a process. So knit wise, 
just transfer this loop onto this needle here. You're going to knit the next one. And then the one that you transferred over, pick it up and go right up over top of the needle. And that's like putting two together as one stitch. And then the rest of the repeat is exactly what you knew here. So it was K9, so it's knit nine. So let's knit the nine stitches. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I'll wait for a second. So you should have nine done. Just put me on pause if you're not ready. The next two are going to be a knit two together. So slide up under both of them and knit those two together. And remember how I said there's a gutter, a gutter stitch, which is in between. So it's the stitch directly after the stitch marker down here. There's one here as well. So we're going to knit the next stitch. And this should leave a total of 10 loops if I'm right. So two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. Grab the next stitch marker and place it here. This will represent the final 10, that is the garter stitch of the border of your cowl. And we're gonna knit and make sure there's 10 I just counted, so I don't need to count. And it, once you get confident, you will not need to count these stitches because your stitch marker is in place to let you know that once you pass it, there's only 10 stitches left. Okay, and just put me on hold if you're not here yet. Get right to the end. And you're done. So you've now just completed row number one. You've got yourself set up with these stitch markers so that you'll be using those throughout the project. Let's turn our work and begin row number two. Row two and four are exactly the same information. So what lies between the, the first stitch and the stitch marker is always gonna be a knit stitch. It doesn't matter what row it is. And so because we've marked it, we can just blast our way just with the knit stitch. On the other side, we know that where the stitch marker is here, and we know that between the stitch marker and the very end is also a knit stitch. So row number two and four, the only difference is everything between this knit stitch and the next one that you'll run into over here, okay, so you'll pass by the middle one, and I'll show you that in a moment, and you'll pass by the middle one, and you're just going to do a purl stitch, which is gonna keep the pattern in alignment. So let's try row number two. So you're just gonna knit the first 10. I'm not gonna count, but I'll keep the camera going, and we have our stitch marker in place. The stitch marker is next. So this represents the first 10 stitches, so two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, which is perfect. 
And before you continue, we're gonna purl now from this stitch marker all the way to the last stitch marker that we have. So we need to move this stitch marker up and over and pick it up and move it so that you will be always be able to find the 10 stitches. And we're gonna purl, so we're going to move this yarn in the front. So come between the two and come in the front and you're now going to purl all the way to the last stitch marker that you put on here. So let's purl and I'll stay quiet and continue the camera. We're coming up to the middle stitch marker that was in place. So what do you think we're gonna do with that? If you said we're just gonna transfer it as we pass by it, that's the right answer. And if you said something else, it's not the correct. So we go right to the stitch marker. This is the middle stitch marker. We wanna always keep an eye on where the middle of the project is because it's easier to know. So as soon as you get here, just transfer it over to your next needle. And so you'll always know where the center is and then continue to purl until the next stitch marker. I'm keeping an eye on where that next stitch marker is, which is going to be the one after this. So this stitch marker then represents that the last 10 stitches are here. And so we're gonna shift the yarn back to the back. You're going to transfer the stitch marker and knit the final 10. You won't need to count if you're confident. And it's okay to count even if you're not confident, just I don't wanna make you sound like that you're not capable. I found with myself, once I got to understand and trust myself, that this becomes a lot easier. So this will always be row number two. And when I play this again in the, in the next time around, I'm just going to just give you the instruction and then just continue quietly with you. So those, all those extra little tips that I'm giving, I'm not going to share a second time. And you're coming all the way to the end. And then we turn our work and we're going to begin again. And now because the green stitch marker, as I mentioned, is gonna be on the right-hand side, I'm also looking at the right-hand side of the project. And that helps me to know which side is which until I really get this thing established. So this was row one and two completed. And now I'm going to go to number three. And in number three, we're going to do another decrease just like we did in row number one. So let's pick it up and start. So what do we know about the first 10? It's just knit. So we're just going to knit as you know.
So when you knit every row like this, it's referred to as the garter stitch. If you're that new to knitting that you don't know that, that's something that's useful to know. So once we get the first 10 done, transfer this over so you can keep an eye and then we're going to begin. This is the gutter stitch. So it's always gonna be the same for everything that you do. So you're just gonna knit the first one. Okay. Let's keep on going. We're going to do that skip stitch process like we showed you before. So you're just gonna transfer this one right directly over and you're going to knit the next stitch. You're then going to take the one that you transferred over and go over top. And that makes two stitches into one. Now we're going to knit the next seven in a row. Last time it was nine, this time it's seven. So let's just knit the next seven. You'll want to count those. So let's do that together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now, the next one is a two together, and then you see the stitch marker? This two together here is the very last of a repeat. That's why I wanted you to put that stitch marker there so that you can verify that when you got your seven, you only can see left before you see the middle of the project. So I'm going to two together the next two stitches. And then transfer. You can always pick it up with your fingers and put it over if you have to. So now we're going to begin again. So we're going to start with the slips, uh, with the skipping of the stitch. So we pick up the first one, transfer, and we knit the next one. And then we pick the one we transferred up and back over. And then how many are we gonna knit in a row? Hopefully you said seven because that's the right answer. So we have seven in a row, we'll count those out together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I want you to take a mental note here. Do you see that you have thrown three stitches left? We know that we're gotta do a two together for the next one. And this is the gutter stitch that I talk about before the here. So once I get my count done of the seven or the nine, depending on what row you're on, you'll always see that there's three left. And so the next two will become a two together. And then you will knit the next one on its own before you end up hitting the edge. Transfer, and then you're going to knit the final 10 that you have. And I'll stay quiet for that. This is the last one, number 10. I secretly been counting in my head because I naturally do that. So now that you have that done, you're gonna turn your work and you can check off number three is done. And we're back to number four, which is what you already knew from row number two. Let's reset and begin number four. So number four is like number two. You're going to knit the first 10 that you have all the way to the stitch marker. So do that.
stitch marker is next, so we're just going to do an automatic transfer. So make sure you do the automatic transfers when you do it. And then this stitch marker all the way to the last stitch marker is just going to be a purl, and you'll pass by the middle one and make sure you transfer the middle um, stitch marker as you do it as well. So let's keep on purling and I'll stay quiet. Okay, stitch marker is next, transfer it over, and then change your last stitch to the knit stitch. So just transfer, get the yarn to go behind, and then knit the final 10. Again, you don't need to count if you're confident. This will conclude number four. So reset in your hands and you can see on the other side things are starting to work out. You can clearly see what is the right side uh, pretty much as well and we're going to now check that off in the list and begin number five. Number five to me was the hardest to learn but I have some memory tricks for you as well that I picked up in my head. So number five is what's picking up to make this spanning just like you see here. And we're going to begin to learn to do that. And for me, it was just a matter of putting a memory hook into my head that I could understand it. So when we go to pick up, we need to knit the first 10. Okay, so go right all the way to the stitch marker and then I will share with you my memory hook. Okay, number 10 is done. Let's transfer that stitch marker before we go any further. And let's show you. So we have our first gutter stitch that we have to think about. And so the first one will be a knit stitch. So we're going to start with a slip, uh, with a skip stitch, but then also do a yarn over and don't panic. I actually had to look this up. So we're going to transfer the first one, like you already know how to do. So you're going to transfer it, and you're going to knit the next one. And then you're going to transfer the, the stitch that you moved over, 
over. But you're not done yet, just hold still. Here, you wanna take this one and it's called a yarn over and you wanna take it between the needles to the front and then just rest your hand up behind. This creates an additional stitch. We now need to do something five times. This is not one of the five times, okay? This is just getting us sort of started. So how I remember is that I'm going to say it's like aerobics. And how I set it in my head is that I'm gonna knit one, shift off, and yarn over one, okay? I'm going to knit two, and then bring it between, yarn over two. I want the number five, so I'm gonna knit three, and yarn over the three. Knit four, yarn over the four. Knit five, yarn over the five. Look, two stitches are left before this. This is a two together knit stitch. So you're just gonna go right up underneath both of them and just wrap and put those two together. So the yarning over that you did added more loops back to, back to the needles that you originally started off when, when you cast it on 48 stitches. And now we're gonna begin the process again. So we're going to just start by just moving this over and we're gonna start by doing a skip stitch. So we transfer and we knit the next one. And then we put the transfer over. That's a skip stitch. And then we have the yarn over. And are you ready for the aerobics? So we knit one. Yarn over one. Knit two. Yarn over two. Knit three. Yarn over three. Knit four. Yarn over four. Knit five. Yarn over five. And now look, you have three stitches before this. So the next one is gonna be coming a two together and this is a gutter stitch. Okay, so put the next two together. And then you're going to knit the gutter stitch that's before the stitch marker. And then what are you gonna do then? You're gonna transfer the stitch marker over and then the final 10 are just a knit stitch. So you don't have to worry about any more special counting. It's truly only going to be number five that is gonna be more counting than any others. But that's because you're gaining stitches when you go to do that. And that's what's creating the texture process here. So we're gonna start with row number six, which will be the final in the repeat, and you'll love number six. Okay, so you're done. So let's turn it around. Okay, you can see your work here. And let's turn it around and let's begin number six in the final in the repeat. And check that off on the list number five. 
So let's begin number six. I think you're gonna like number six because number six is just straight knitting all the way over. Yeah, gay man <laughs> always is telling you to do something straight. But that's all it is. And you're just gonna do your knit stitch all the way over. You'll transfer your stitch markers. And this is what creates that line, a ridge in the front side of the cowl. So I'll be quiet as we do the knit stitch across for row number six. Um, I should tell you, these are stitches that is the yarn over that is creating space. So it appears like it's a missed stitch, but it's not. I should tell you that. And you'll see that every other time. So I'm coming up to the end of number six. So the video is gonna play one more time and we're gonna restart, reset my hands, and we're gonna get started without the over explanation for all of the steps and just keep the camera going as we demonstrate then rows number one through six once again. So as you turn your work, you'll see the right side of the work and you will really kind of see it more as you continue along. So let's begin rows number one through six. So we're going to begin rows number one through six without the over explanation so that you can keep going back to this part of the tutorial without me having to re-explain everything from scratch. So we'll go through the steps and I'll keep the camera going. Row number one, we're gonna knit the first 10 to the stitch marker.
get to the stitch marker and transfer it over. And row number one is gonna have a decrease. So we're gonna do our first gutter stitch as a knit stitch. And then we're gonna do the skip stitch process. So transfer. Knit the next one. And do the first one here that you just transferred over and put it over. You're going to knit stitch the next nine. We'll count these together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And this should leave us two loops before the stitch marker, which it does. So this will be a two together knit stitch. And let's transfer stitch marker to keep the center. And now we're gonna immediately start off with the skip stitch process. So knit wise, transfer over, knit the next one, and move the front first one over top. And then you're gonna knit the next nine. I'll count these with you. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. This should leave three stitches before the last stitch marker. So the next two will be used as a two together knit stitch. And then the next one is the gutter stitch and you're just gonna knit it. Transfer your stitch marker and the last 10 will each be a knit stitch. that completed row number one you can check that off on your sheet and turn our work to reset and let's start row number two remember that row number two and four are exactly the same and you're going to knit the first ten to the stitch marker Once you're to the stitch marker, transfer it over. 
The remaining all the way to the last stitch marker is going to be a purl stitch. So move the yarn in front and purl. Be sure to transfer the stitch marker over to keep the center line and continue to purl until the next stitch marker. The stitch marker is next, and so you're gonna change the stitch. So transfer over and begin to knit stitch. So move the yarn back and knit stitch the remaining 10 that are left. This will conclude row number two. So let's turn our work and reset and get ready for number three. Check that off on your list. Row number three, we're going to do another decrease. So the first 10 will be the regular knit stitch until the stitch marker. Transfer the stitch marker and let's get ready for the next section. So the first one is the gutter stitch. You, you know to knit that already. The next one is the skip stitch. So you're going to transfer over knit wise and knit the next one. How many are you gonna knit in a row this time? If last time we did nine in row number one it's reduced by two, so you're gonna knit the next seven. I'll count those with you. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and this should leave two before the stitch marker, which it does. This is a two together knit stitch.
So put those two together as one and transfer. Okay, we're gonna start with the skip stitch. So begin transferring it over. Knit the next one and move this one back over top. And then we have seven in a row that are going to be the knit stitch. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And this should leave three loops before the stitch marker because it's on the other side. So the next two will become two together as a knit stitch. And then what is the last stitch before the stitch marker? It's just a gutter stitch. So make sure you just knit it as regular. Transfer the stitch marker over. And what are you gonna do with the last 10? That's right, you're gonna knit, knit, knit stitch the last 10. You don't need to count if you're confident. And that will conclude row number three. Let's reset our hands and let's check that off the list and begin number four. Number four, you're going to knit the first 10 until the stitch marker. Number four is the same as number two. What are you gonna do between the first stitch marker and the last stitch marker? Do you remember? Transfer the stitch marker over, move the yarn in front, and you're gonna purl all the way to the last stitch marker. Make sure you transfer the middle one over as you pass by.
Once you get to here, just transfer the stitch marker and then knit the final 10. And this concludes row number four, turn around and reset your hands. Row number five is back to the aerobics. So let's begin and let's just knit our first 10 and not worry about aerobics yet. So let's do the first 10 to the stitch marker. transfer over the stitch marker and let's begin the fun stuff. We're going to start with our gutter stitch. You already know what to do with that. You're just going to knit it and then you'll begin the fun stuff. So we're going to do a skip stitch. Okay, so you're going to transfer knit wise, knit the next one and then bring this back. Then you're going to yarn over and you're ready for aerobics. So you knit one, yarn over one, knit two, yarn over two, knit three, yarn over three, knit four, yarn over four, knit five, yarn over five. You should have two stitches left before the center and those will be a two together knit stitch. Coming across, just transfer and just start a new one. So you're going to do a skip stitch. So transfer the first one, knit the second, and transfer that back over. And now you're going to yarn over. And now we start aerobics. So knit one, yarn over one. Knit two, yarn over two. Knit three, yarn over three. Knit four, yarn over four. Knit five, yarn over five. You should have three stitches left before the stitch marker. The next two are together. And then the next one is the gutter stitch. So it's just one net stitch by itself. Transfer the stitch marker. And then the last 10 are a knit stitch. And that will conclude row number five. And you can see, you can really start seeing how it's operating on your 
knitting needles now. Let's turn our work and do number six, which is the final of the repeat. Row number six, it's just a knit stitch all the way across. So just make sure you transfer your stitch markers as you go. Transfer your stitch marker and keep on knitting. Transfer the stitch knee, uh, marker over and keep on knitting. And this will conclude number six. So I'll put a time marker on screen where you can go back to, to skip the over explanation and just continue back on number one. And you'll complete numbers one through six until the whole project is measuring a total of 36 inches long or whatever size that you prefer to end on. You need to end on a row number six though, in order to have that imbalance. And I'll take you to the pattern and you can really see how things are working out beautifully in the pattern as you or unscrolling it here. So let's uh, talk about this repeating and let's do, th do that next. <laughs> so as we continue, we want to go from rows number one through six until the piece measures 36 inches from the beginning to the end. And so we just want to sew along the edge, um, putting them together so it's in a round circle. It's kind of a big one, so you may want to reconsider how uh, long this is. And obviously the shorter you make it, the, the quicker the project will be. 
So our next step is, is that once you have that done, you're going to want to bind off. So when you're officially done, you'll want to come back to this video in order to show you how to do a bind off. And so we want to, we have our stitch markers in place and we're going to be rescuing those as we go. And I'm now going to show you how to do the bind off. Once your project is ready and you think it's long enough, then what we're going to do is a bind off and we're going to do a knit stitch bind off. So we're going to knit the first one and transfer over. And we'll knit the second one and transfer over. We're now going to use this needle here and we're going to pick up the first one. And it takes a bit of practice, but you're just going to pull it over top of the other one like that. And you're going to do this all the way across. So knit the next one and use your needle to pick up the first one and go up and over. If you hold this firm, this strand right here, it helps to pull it backwards so that it doesn't want to slide off. So knit and transfer. Okay, and you're gonna do this all the way across. I'll show you two more times. And as you get the stitch markers, just make sure you just take it off the needles completely and just put it back in your pouch so you have them for another project in the future. So continue to bind off and you can see you're having a beautiful edge at the end of this project. Please bind off all the way to the end. So I'm coming to the end of the bind off and everything's working out really quite nicely. And got my last one. And you gotta watch how you handle that last one if you're new to knitting. So we have one last loop. So what I'm going to do is you trim enough yarn off here to be able to um, just sew the two ends together. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show it to you on the other project that I showed you at the beginning. And before you go anywhere, just pull up the loop here and insert this loop, this strand through the loop and that will lock it to prevent it from unraveling on you. Like that. And so now when you look at your project, you have a beautiful fan look, right? So what I'll do is I'll take you to the original and we'll show you how to put those together. So with the long end that you'll have left over is that you're going to use a tapestry needle and to be able to put this thing through. So put the tail end in and I want you to just kind of turn it so that the wrong sides are facing each other and you're just gonna turn it like this and this will keep the outside on the outside. And because the stitch count is the same, you're going to be able to match the stitch. So just go directly over to the opposite side and back over. That. If you want to favor the back loops, it will look nicer. So don't go into both loops, go into the back here, and then here go into that one there. Okay, so if you go into just those, it'll look a lot better. So move to the next one. So back of this one, and, and then in this one. And you're gonna work your way all the way down. So please do this, and I'll see you at the end of this row. So once you come to the end here, you're going to wanna to tie it into a knot, and you're gonna to wanna to do any loose um, tails that um, by just weaving them in. Okay, so I'm just going to tie it in a knot. So you can turn it to the inside of the project. It'll be obviously a lot bigger than this. But what you want to do is just drag the stitch work inside only. Okay, and if you want to tie it into a knot on the inside, it will hold it to the inside as well, which I'm not opposed to doing. And then just kind of weave back and forth a total of three times within the seam line. So don't stick your needle all the way through the project that you're going to see the needle. Okay, so this will keep it all on the inside. So after you have that done, you can just safely just trim it down. And so this is the starting strand that we had. And therefore you would have this really cool cowl, obviously in a much bigger detail, but it's really neat. And this is a great stitch lesson today. That's it, and we hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.